This is Rindon. In this video, we're going to be talking more about BitKey. I'm going to show you the actual software and the tools it has and how to create an offline secure Bitcoin wallet that's never been on an internet connected computer so that your keys are very, very safe and secure. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about how to put it onto a jump drive like this, uh, the, the software, the tools, not the actual wallet, um, or you can put it onto a, a DVD uh, as well. So if you haven't done that yet, check out the other video and go ahead and do that. And then we're going to put this jump drive in the computer and we're going to reboot the computer. Make sure that the internet is disconnected, that if you have a physical cable or the Wi-Fi should be disabled when this boots up. And you'll hit like escape or F9 to boot in. It'll give you boot options. Um, and then you'll go ahead and boot into this. It's a Linux operating system. I'll show you just what it looks like. I'm running it in a virtual machine on my computer here just for demonstration purposes. Uh, and when it first boots up, it gives you these three options. You can run offline, which is what we're going to, going to do today. You can also have to do some different online modes, which let you like watch. You can look up certain wallets, certain balances, um, uh, different addresses, and you can actually sign and send transactions as well. Um, obviously, the least risky one is the offline one because it's just you and your computer, and there's uh, uh, just a lot of security there. It's, it's, it's got, they got like an air gap machine because it's not connected to the internet at all. It's not connected to anything that can, uh, you know, give away information about your, the private keys that are generated, or at least it's very, very difficult. Uh, okay, so this is what we do. When it first boots up, it says remove the, uh, the USB jump drive that we booted from. So we'll go ahead and do that. They call it the red boot device. Um, and then we're going to put in a separate USB device, which I've already done in my virtual machine. And that'll be for our storage. So with this, this isn't like your regular operating system. When we turn off the computer or if the power goes out right now or something, uh, nothing is saved on the hard drive of this computer. It's all just running in the memory right now. When the computer gets turned off, everything is gone except what has been written to this USB jump drive that we put in. So I've got mine here, I, it's called Gray, and it has this folder called BitKey uh, data. And all the data that, that we're gonna be doing today is gonna be saved in there if we actually if we save it in there. Nothing, I don't think anything is saved in there by default. So these are the tools that are offered on BitKey. It's Electrum, Warp Wallet, Bit Address, a QR code generator, a password strength calculator, tells you how good your password is, uh, Coinbin, and then it has, this is a Linux operating system, so that's the terminal, uh, text editor, and a file manager, then this button here says to turn it off. Um, so the first one we'll look at is Electrum. So Electrum wants a password. When we first turn it on, I'm just going to put in password. Uh, this is this is just the password. Oh, actually, it's password one two three. It's my, my password because I set this up earlier. So this is this is stored. This is to access the information on my USB jump drive. That's the only reason that password is for. Um, then we're going to create a new wallet. So sure. So this gives me this generation seed. And we want to copy it down, so we'll just we'll copy. And since we're on an air gap machine, it's not nearly as scary copying this and worrying about it being saved in the clipboard, worrying about this falling into the wrong hands. So I'm just going to save this seed to the jump drive that I'm going to keep very safe. So I'll call this Electrum Wallet Seed. And what this is, anyone who has this seed, let's see, I believe it's this seed and my corresponding password will be able to recover this wallet and you'd spend money from it and do anything like that. So then we retype it to, ah, <laughs> oh, it's not going to let us, uh, let me see if I can do this. It's not going to let us uh, just paste it in there, which I would love to do. So yeah, oh, it doesn't let us do it. Okay, so we paste it in there and then we just do the uh, password. So the combination of this password and that uh, that seed is going to generate a master private key for us. I think this is like a it's like an HD wallet, a hierarchical deterministic wallet, and so it creates lots of different addresses, um, like of all these different addresses that are all a, a root or that are all stem from this uh, this seed. So it's pretty cool just by remembering just those random numbers and letters in that password or those random words in that password, we get access to all these different uh, spending, uh, receiving addresses. Yeah, so that's it. And then we can send money to someone. Like if we take, if we wanted to take, like this is our own receiving address, but if we want to send to this address, 
we just say here, we put a little description if we want to about the transaction and the amount we want to send. So this is in micro BTC, milli BTC. And you can change in the settings how that's displayed too. Anyway, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on Electrum because there's other videos talking about Electrum, but it's a tool uh, that lets you um, basically send and receive Bitcoin. And you can, I, you can yeah, use this to sign transactions too. Yeah, so we can actually sign a transaction, um, get the hex code for it, and then we can just copy that hex code to the USB jump drive. In fact, I'll do a video on this, and then we can go online and actually broadcast that signed transaction to the network, the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain <laughs> network, and um, and then we can uh, then that'll get received and everything. But we, we never expose our private key in that situation, which is very nice. The next tool here is called Warp Wallet. Warp Wallet's kind of cool. You just type in any random thing. I'll just stick with password123, which is a terrible passphrase to use for this. So don't do it. And then you can enter in, a, if you want to, as an option, you enter in your email address. So whatever your email address is. And then it like hashes these two together. Sanity check. Yeah, it's just to make sure that you typed in the wrong, the, the correct email address. And then um, it says consider larger. So I, I didn't provide very good, a very long password um, for it, but it uses this. It's like we call it salt and it hashes this passphrase that you put in with your email and then it creates or it generates a, a private key and a public key for Bitcoin that you can use. So it's doing that right now and it's just about finished. And there it is. So we have this QR code for the private, the public. We could, uh, can we print this? But well, we either way we can copy this. So in fact, I'm going to copy this uh, right here. Do, do, do copy, and I could copy the private key and save it again in like a. Uh, where, where is it at? Oops, that one's hiding up here. I could save that, save it here if I wanted to, right? Uh, then this next one though is a QR code generator, which we'll use right now. We'll just take this this thing that we just generated, this uh, public address. Good night, what's going on here? So that's actually pretty cool. I guess the clipboard doesn't store anything. What's going on? It's a, it's a... Wow, so this is super crazy. I mean, cool. When you close out of the application, anything that was stored in your clipboard gets uh, cleared out and replaced with just text. That's a pretty good security feature. Um, anyway, though, so if we had like a, a, a Bitcoin address here, and then uh, we just go down here, we hit enter, it'll show us the QR code or anything. I and mean, we can type in like anything and create a, a QR code for it. But unless it meets the, the right um, like standards for a Bitcoin wallet, it's not gonna be a Bitcoin address to send to. Like this is eBay.com, the QR code. So it's just a simple QR code generator. But if you have a properly formatted whatever, um, Bitcoin pr a public address, then this will work and you can use this to like, because sometimes like you'll want to send with your phone, so you just scan that QR code without having to like manually type in the uh, address. It also has a bit address built in. So bit address I've used in some of my other videos. This is like the ones that it, it, it'll put a bunch of these green points on here and generate a nice big random number for us. Um, and then it'll create a, either a single or multiple uh, Bitcoin addresses we can send and receive from. So it's just about done here, 89%, 100%. So here we go. Just by moving the mouse, we've got this random Bitcoin address, public key, private key. We can, uh, you could print it. If you had the print drivers, one thing you might could do with this type of setup is have the print drivers for Linux on the jump drive as well. And then that way, when you boot into you, uh, this you know, secure air gap operating system, you could hurry and install the Linux drivers and then you could print as well. I'm not sure if they support that or not, if they have all the software, the, everything you'd need to print. But anyway, uh, but you can print a paper wallet here, which is pretty cool. And then if you go to wallet details, you can actually type in like, well, you, yeah, you can type, type in your address either in hex format or base six, like we did when we rolled the dice to generate a, a key. Or you can just do the wallet import format if all you have is your private key. Um, yeah, but so that's pretty cool. And it shows you all the, the details about it. And they also have a brain wallet feature where you type in, you know, something 
Oh, there's no way I'm gonna get that the same twice in a row. It'll be like, you're bad. Oh, oh, I got it. Wow. And so, but yeah, it'll basically just, um, whatever you type in, it's going to create a uh, Bitcoin address and private key for you. And that's it. What's this thing do? Oh, it shows what it is. Look at that, G a bunch of GHs. Cool. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, bitaddress.org. Another tool is the password strength calculator, I guess. So if you type in just a password, it tells you like this is a terrible password. People are gonna crack it instantly. On a score of zero to four, it scores a zero. So don't use this password. But if you have a stronger password with like some capital letters, some numbers, some symbols, and it's like 20 characters long, it says in seconds, it's gonna take forever for people to crack this, um, centuries long, and um, on zero to four, this is a four. So it just kind of just tells you about um, your password and the likelihood of someone being able to crack your password. Uh, Coinbin uh, is another, uh, they have a, a website too that you can do this uh, on. It's a web wallet, but you can run it privately like this. So you can uh, create your own wallet. So if you want to create a new one, just go to new wallet and just click generate. It'll keep generating a bunch of new wallets for you. You can show the private key here and then we can save this information to the uh, jump drive. Uh, we can sign transactions. So it's basically just another option uh, to this Electrum. So you've got Electrum, which is like a software wallet that's a software application running on the computer. And uh, Coinbin provides most of the same functionality, but it's web-based. Um, and so you can, it just happens within the browser. Uh, yeah, but that is all the tools. So. Hopefully you found this uh, kind of informative, just a quick little sneak peek. Oh, I just, one kind of fun thing too, like if we open the terminal and type in like a, like a lot of the basic Linux commands, like if config to figure out like some network information about this, it doesn't even have the command. So they've really stripped it down to have just the tools you need to do uh, cryptocurrency and uh, like that kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead and uh, I think I'll make some more videos on how to maybe do offline, trans sign offline transactions and then broadcast them to the network. So maybe check some of those out. But I appreciate you watching this and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.